Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, it's all about muskie. Big muskie on the fly. I'm in the French River area of Ontario, and I'm out with Andy Pappas from Vicious Fishing. We're gonna be fly fishing for huge muskie. I'm talking 40, 50 inches. We're gonna be talking about structure, presentation, how to find them using temperature, and bait fish. I mean, it's gonna be an incredibly detailed show. I know you're gonna love it. Stay with us. On this week's show, I'm traveling to Totem Point Lodge on the French River in Northeast Ontario. The French River has bragging rights to excellent bass, walleye, and perch fishing. But we're here for the legendary muskie. Andy Pappas, owner of Vicious Fishes Guide Service, joins me today. Andy has over 25 years of muskie fishing success to his credit and has boated literally hundreds of muskies. He is fairly new to fly fishing and is quite interested to see how well we will fare with a predator like the muskies. His strong depth of knowledge and expertise will really come into play in finding muskie in a big river system like the French. There had been a major cold front that moved through the area just before I arrived. The sun was high, but the temperature was cool. In fact, it got as cold as 28 degrees Fahrenheit, not normal for the end of June, and certainly not great conditions for muskie. The muskie fishing was tough thanks to the weather, but like any good guide, Andy had a plan. In fact, he had three plans. Our first locations to try were warm water areas. These are shallower and had an abundance of weeds. The second location was visible and sunken structure. Points, humps, shoals, and the deep water edges of weed beds. The final location was locating schools of baitfish or forage. These baitfish or forage are usually in open water areas, often deep. Usually around these suspended open water schools will be predators such as muskie picking off stragglers and those that are wounded or sick. Andy, you've got me casting, doing a fan cast across the bow here, and there's a reason for it. Can you explain it and why it's important to understand when you're searching for these muskie? Yeah, we've got a, um, a huge bank of emergent vegetation now behind us, and to be thorough, we wanted to work along that and work that all. Now we've, we're spinning back the other way and working the submerged vegetation off the stuff you can see. And the idea is to work a grid so that we're covering all the water here. I just fan, fan cast the whole area. There is no bad water here. I think. <laughs> wow. That's a big large mouth bass. That's a nice one. Yeah. So I guess it's one of the unfortunate side benefits is catching big bass. Yeah, there's a, a wide variety of species here. <laughs> look at that. Now that's Small a mouth, nice large, large mouth. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Whoa. Good sized bass. It's very nice. Well done. Ta-da. What's that, five pounds? Yeah, about that. That's a beautiful fish. She'll be just fine. No worse for wear. Why a good guide is so critical, Andy, is boat control. I mean, you're putting me in the right position that for me to cast and present this fly. I'm not having to work my arm hard. And uh, that's, in, you know, totally you. So you're making my presentation a lot easier and saving my arm. Can you explain what you're doing here and why? First of all, it, it helps that I've got a uh, remote control for the electric motor so that I can run around to wherever you're not and I'll leave you 
the space you need to be able to do your job. But what we're doing is we're getting upwind of a drift that, that we want you to hit. And then whether I've got to back us into the wind or pull us along slightly, slightly faster than the, the light wind, I'm using that electric to do that. And really, it's, the boat control should just be, you shouldn't have to think about it at all. You sh if I'm doing everything right, you should be able to cast to your heart's content and not have to think about what's around you or behind you. The cold fronts had taken their toll and the musky bite was definitely off. We headed back to the lodge to regroup for tomorrow and plan strategies. It was obviously time to consider plan B. Totem Point Lodge is located in picturesque French River country. A beautiful drive-to lodge that offers both housekeeping and full American plan packages. Family owned since 1972, their top priority being comfort, cleanliness and service. All cottages are fully equipped, including full kitchens with a standard stove, fridge and dishes. For anglers on a budget wanting access to excellent fishing, this is the place to go. The next morning, we headed out. The weather was finally stable, but we expected the bite to still be off for the muskie. Relying on Andy's exceptional understanding of muskie behavior, he recommended we move to defined deep structure, such as points, sunken humps, and the deep edges of weed beds. Time to initiate plan B. That was definitely a muskie. I thought it was a weed like that. See the weed yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. And then it moved, it shot off. Ooh, that's exciting. First muskie of the day, just followed. So you can see the, the tops of the weeds that we're trying to fish through yeah, here. This is. And that fly's coming along at the perfect depth. So we're just like about a foot down with this fly yeah. using this full sinking line and uh, as you can see, this is synthetic material fly, which is perfect because it doesn't weigh a lot. Pulsates underwater and it's got a lot of glimmer and shine with the sun. It's perfect, easy to cast. The technique that I found most effective when using large jointed streamers is known as the jerk strip retrieve. This involves a fairly aggressive stripping motion with the definite jerk of the rod at the beginning of the strip. At the same time, you pull in various amounts of line with your other hand. It is all done in a fluid motion. This retrieve helps impart an action that mimics an injured or stressed bait fish. Muskie are exceptionally opportunistic in their hunting and will target the weak and sick. They love an easy meal, and this is what this technique does to give your fly the right action. You can see that we just passed over a big fish about halfway down in 12 feet of water. I think it's a small muskie. I think so too. Okay, let me get the net. Little muskie. But, you know, it's, it's a good sign. You want the fish to take. Been seeing them and seeing them and seeing them. It's about time you got a taker. Whoa. I thought we talked about head first. There we go. In the pen. All right. Oh, and you've got a about a 30, about a 33 inch fish. 32, 33. Probably a male. Oh, yes. Good. You want me to lift up now and take this out of the way? How does that look? That looks okay. wonderful, it's eh? It's a pretty green French River muskie. Okay. And 
there she well there he goes we pounded every piece of structure Andy thought would hold musky but they weren't moving it had to do with water temperature which had been impacted by the weather uh, Colin just released a musky I just uh, uh, hooked and lost a pike and it's it's all to do with the temperatures coming up and we're looking forward now to a, a good evening. We're seeing activity levels uh, increasing on fish generally, and uh, we're coming into prime time now, hoping big things are gonna happen. One of the things I think is real important here, that people would be interested in, Andy, is uh, how important temperature is in finding these musky. Especially this time of year, we're in June, and uh, we've had a really funky kind of June where it's been very cold, especially at night, and water temperatures have fluctuated dramatically. Can you talk a bit about that and why that's so important? Muskies are uh, basically a warm water fish, and how, this, how they respond to the cold front that we've just uh, experienced here is they've shut down. The water temperatures have dropped, fish activity has dropped. So what we're looking for now is the structures that are gonna hold the warmest water. So things that are shallow, weedy, out of the wind, and uh, we're hoping that the most active fish are gonna be there. It's a musky. Oh, it's a nice one too. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice fish. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, getting them on the reel. All right. And I just cast that out and given it a few twitches. And he came up and just hammered it. Wow. Wow, nice fish. That is a, a really good fish. Great thing about having such a wide open boat, you can stroll with the fish. He's coming towards me. Great. Okay, no, he's going this way. No, he's going this way. He sees, he tried getting in the weeds. Wow, nice fish. Okay. So, whoo. I love this. I love this. It doesn't get better, does it? No, it doesn't. <sighs> and you just changed flies, right? I did. I went back to the quarter chicken dinner. Yeah. Which has been, oh no! Ah, oh. oh, I can't believe it. <sighs> he turned, came towards me, and before I could reverse, popped out. Oh, we got fish. We got fish, we didn't get him in, but it's okay. But That's that musky good. fishing. That, that was a nice fish. That, that was 40, 40. 40. That was well over 40. Was it well over 40? I was going to give that about 46. <sighs> 46, 47 even. It's okay. We'll get another one. We'll get another one. Okay. We'll get another one. He was right where you said he'd be. The challenge for fly fishers is using flies that are big enough and give off sufficient sound to entice a big musky to move. Conventional tackle anglers cast some very big lures that give off a lot of sound and present a large silhouette. We have to use flies to try to do the same, but are still easy to cast. This is where many lessons can be learned from saltwater fly fishers. Their patterns present large silhouettes, but use materials that shed water quickly. When coming to the French River, bring a supply of jointed streamers. Articulated streamers in colors that match perch or even small walleye work well. Bright colors are extremely effective at times, so have a few streamers in both chartreuse and white. Big topwater flies can also be used when the conditions are right. I love topwater action as the takes are always explosive. We highly recommend the addition of nautable wire bite tippet in at least 40 pound strength whenever you fish for muskie. After spending the bulk of the day casting a deep structure with only limited success, Andy recommended it was time for plan C. We are going to search for a muskie that were around suspended bait fish. 
So we're seemingly fishing in the middle of nowhere right now. But what we've actually got here is a giant sand flat the size of several football fields that has schools of perch that are each several thousand perch. And any place you've got this much food, you're gonna have predators, including muskies. And it looks as though we're, we're just fishing in the middle of nowhere and most people wouldn't think to fish here, but we're gonna drift this, we're gonna cast, and we're gonna be casting over all this, this the Serengeti of the French River area here. So uh, hopefully we'll tie into some of those predators. Musky. Follow? Musky, yeah. right here, right here. I can see it, yeah. Yep. Gone. That was a 40, 40, over 40 incher. Real wide at the eyes. You see it? I, I saw a muskie, I saw the back half, I couldn't make out the size. <sighs> I love this. My hands are shaking. Andy's getting us on the fish. We finally got the right conditions and <clears throat> I love this. I love this. If you haven't tried muskie fishing, you've got to do this. That look at the size of this one. So they're right here. This is cool. Searching open waters for most anglers is a daunting challenge, especially for a fly fisher. However, if you use the right tools, such as full sinking fly lines and sonar, you can quickly eliminate unproductive waters and locate schools of forage, such as perch. That is where the muskie will probably be hunting. But sonar is not the only tool Andy was using. He was also watching the seagulls to see if they were diving to eat injured perch, which would indicate something was happening below the surface. Often, you'll see explosive takes or splashes near the surface that indicate a muskie has come up to eat stunned or injured fish. All these visual clues, combined with the use of sonar, can really help you narrow down where the predators are. This is where having a top guide like Andy is so key. Andy knew how to deal with the problems related to the weather and took a logical approach to finding the fish through an ABC plan. Fish, fish on. Oh, wow. That's a big one too. Nice one. Okay, big fish, big fish. I've got them on tight too. It's a beautiful jump. And he hit that fly on the pause, just like a lot of big fish do. Okay, I'm on the reel. You tell me which side you're coming on? There he is there. Oh. Okay, it's not the big monster that just followed you though, unfortunately, but it's a nice fish. Oh yeah. Beautiful specimen. Yes, very nice. And I got a pretty good purchase on him, like I said. And, and we got it. All right. And the fly just popped out. <laughs> oh my goodness. How sweet is that on a fly rod? That was very nice and some beautiful jumps. It gave you great sport. Excellent. And I had a much bigger one on yesterday. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get him ready to revive. Okay, and let him go. All right. And it's gone. I'll have to do some more hunting. Once Andy located right. the muskie, then it was All virtually right. non-stop action. Oh, no! No! Ah. The problem was, I kept losing the fish. We were at fish 16. 16. And a muskie oh, took on God. top, but I lost it too. Awesome. Oh, he's off. Finally, my luck was about to change. Got him, got him, that's awesome. a big one too. It's okay. a big one. Rod down, rod down, that's a bigger fish. Folks, this is a big fish, big fish. If I land this fish, it's the biggest, I think it's gonna be the biggest muskie I've ever caught. Okay, you wanna come back here? Yep. I think I can, I think it's ready to go. Okay. It's got it nicely it's nice sideways in, in its mouth. Try and keep it. Wow. Hey. 
<laughs> we don't want any more of that. No, sorry. Let's keep her hooked up. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Go. Got it. Yes! Yes! And the fly's out. And the fly just came out. Oh my goodness. Yes! Oh, look at that. Look at that. This is nice, incredible. nice fish. Wow. Wow. Okay. You got that? Yeah, gorgeous. She's gonna go. Ready to go. Where she go? Off she swims. Look at that. Thank you, girl. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time. So if you want to be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded.